Hi there and welcome to this video on replacing Excel VBA with Python. What we'll see is how to uh, write macros and functions in Python and how we can automate and script Excel using just Python uh, without the need for any VBA. The first thing I want to show you is how we can call into Excel from Python. So I'm using uh, Miniconda here but you could use any Python environment for this. Uh, I need to activate my Conda environment first, and that's a Python 3.9 one. Uh, and what we need to do is install this PyWin32 package. Uh, this is an open source package, you, you may have it already. Uh, but once we've got that installed, we can start a Python prompt, and then from win32.com.client, I'm going to import this dispatch class. Now, this dispatch class is going to give us uh, our sort of entry point into Excel, if you like. What I'm going to do now is say Excel equals dispatch an Excel application. What this is going to do is get the uh, the Excel application com object, uh, which we'll see what we can do within a minute. So if I do that, you can see here, I've now got this Microsoft Excel 16 uh, com object. Uh, and we'll go into a bit more detail into what that is in a second. But for now, just notice that I can do things like this. Uh, so if I say range A1, so this cell here, uh, and I could just say set a value on this. What we can see is the range in Excel has updated with the value that I've set here. Similarly, if I put something in here, and then back in Python, if I said Excel range uh, B2, then I can get the value. Uh, and what we'll see is how actually uh, through this Excel application object, we can access everything we need in order to automate Excel. Now, if you've done some VBA programming before in Excel, you more than likely will have come across this application object. Now, the object that you're using in VBA is actually exactly the same as the application object in Python. Uh, both from VBA and Python, we're actually accessing the same underlying object model. So that means that absolutely everything we could have done previously in VBA in Excel we can also do in, in Python. I just want to demonstrate this by uh, recording an Excel macro and then translating that into the equivalent Python code. I'll start by going to the developer tab and record macro. Uh, it doesn't matter what it's called. And just here I'll select a few cells, uh, change the change the color, and then stop the macro. Now if I go into the VBA editor, we'll see that we've now got this macro which is selecting a range, uh, and then it's getting this selection interior property and setting these additional properties on that interior object. Now to do the same in Python, uh, the first thing we will notice is that these constants here, if we try and access those in Python, we won't, we won't get them. But if we use the same win32.com package, we can, we can get these constants. So what I need to do is say from win32.com.client import constants. And now if I try constants Excel solid, oops, I've got a typo there. There we go. So now uh, all of these constants exist in this, uh, in this constants namespace in Python. There's a, there's a few differences between the Python language and VBA. Uh, we'll cover a few in this, in this video, but the first one I want to point out is that when we call a method in VBA, uh, we can just do it like this. So here what we're doing is getting a range and then calling the select method. Now in Python, methods always have parentheses, uh, so we'll see that in a second. I'll start by getting the range object in Python. I'll choose a different one just so it's clear what we're doing, so I'll go from a7 to C11. Uh, and then I can call the select method on the range like that. Again, remembering that we need the parentheses in Python. Now we need to get this uh, selection interior object. So if we do, uh, let's call it I excel.selection.interior. That's now got this same interior object that we were using here in this with clause, and now we can start setting some properties on it. So if I say i.pattern equals, and now we need to use that constants 
uh, module. So constant solid. And again, a typo. And then uh, again, the next one, pattern color index. Excel automatic. Uh, and then There we go. We can see it's it's updating now. As I as I run the Python code, it's updating. Obviously, normally we'd write this into a function or something rather than type it in, but uh, but you get the idea. I think these probably are already set. But yeah, so there we go. Uh, so here we've just seen how we can how we can pretty easily take some VBA code with a little bit of knowledge about how to do it in Python and then translate it into Python code. So we can build up uh, Python functions to basically do anything that we would previously have done in, in VBA. For the next part of this video, I want to look at how we can take Python and bring it inside of Excel. So rather than like here, we've got it running as a, a separate process where Python's you know running separately from Excel, but we're talking to Excel via this, via this API. I'm gonna show you how we can embed Python into the Excel process itself, and that will let us do some more interesting things like actually write uh, macros like this VBA macro that we can then call from buttons or functions that we can call from, from the worksheet and things like that. All the stuff that we're used to doing in VBA, but showing how we can do it in Python. To get Python into Excel, we'll use the pixel add-in or PYXLL. Uh, if you're not familiar with this add-in already, then go to the website pixel.com, pyxll.com, and have a look here, you can find out about all the various different features of Pixel. There's also, uh, in the documentation, you can find uh, you can find some details about how to install the Pixel add-in, uh, as well as the download page where you can download it. Okay, so back in Excel now, with the Pixel add-in loaded, I've got this new uh, Pixel tab here. This is actually entirely configurable, so we could change this to be whatever we wanted, you know, if you had different different things you wanted to do. Uh, but one thing I've got here is I've installed the, the separate package, the Pixel Jupyter package. And what that does is give me this button here. And when I click that, uh, it brings up a, a Jupyter notebook. So uh, with Pixel, often you'll write uh, Python modules that live outside of Excel, and you configure the add-in to load those modules when the Pixel add-in starts. Uh, but for demoing or for playing around with using a Jupyter notebook is quite convenient. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Uh, I'll create a new notebook and we'll see how we did uh, what we did just previously in the Python prompt but now inside of Excel and what, what extra that gives us. Now a slight difference here is rather than using the win32.com package directly, what I'm going to do here is say from pixel import Excel app. Now this Excel app function will get us the same Excel application that we saw a second ago uh, but the only difference is that it guarantees that it will be the one that we're that we're running Python in. So whereas before, if you had uh, Excel running as multiple instances, then doing it using the win32.com dispatch class, that would just pick any of those instances, whereas using Excel app, it gets the right one. So here we'll just say uh, Excel equals Excel app. And we can see that this is exactly the same object we had before. It's just this Microsoft Excel application instance. So we can do the same sort of things we were doing a second ago, say range A1, you know, whatever we want here, exactly as we saw before. Uh, I want to kind of recreate what you saw in the very initial part of this video now. So I had a string which was something like, uh, I can't remember exactly, Python in Excel, no, something like that. Now we want to get that uh, into, into Excel. We could obviously do that just as we saw using Excel range A1. but I want to do it so that it appears down this way like this. So what I'll do is first of all, say words equals, I'll split this by, by space. Uh, and then I'll also get this column and we'll iterate over the words and set each word in each cell. So uh, for that, we'll do a uh, column, etc. Get the first column here. One difference between Python and VBA is the indexing. 
In VBA, uh, it's more common to index from one, whereas in Python, we always index from zero. Uh, but actually, these uh, these these Excel objects are indexed from one. So this col will give us the first column. Uh, and then what we'll do is use a quick for loop. So I'll uh, use iron word. If you've not seen this enumerate thing in Python, uh, this is really useful. It basically, rather than just uh, iterating over each word, it gives us an index as well. So what we'll do now is get the cells collection from this column, oops, and index into that, remembering that these Excel objects are indexed from one, not from zero, and then set the value of that to our word. Now remember, if you're ever not sure uh, what the methods or properties are on these objects, then you can look in the, the VBA editor or look at the, uh, the VBA object model because they're exactly the same in Python. Uh, you can also find all the docs on the Microsoft uh, documentation website. So if we run this now, then yeah, now we get these words written out into this column as we wanted. So far, this is, this is not much different from what we were doing earlier where we were just running Python outside of Excel. But by running it inside of Excel, uh, we do get some important differences. So I want to show you that now. If we take uh, all of this code and refactor it into a function, uh, let's just call it pi test. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste everything that we had here. So we'll get the Excel app. Uh, get this. Split the text into these words. And then uh, do this loop here. So now, uh, rather than do that line by line, I can just call uh, PyTest and we can check it does exactly the same as before. Uh, but now what we can do is, again, from this pixel package, we can import this Excel macro decorator. And if we apply this decorator like this, so we just use this at symbol is, is the Python syntax for applying a decorator, uh, and we use this Excel macro decorator. The difference now is that this is now an Excel macro in the same way that we could have created a, a macro or sub function in, in VBA. So if I go into the uh, developer thing and insert a button, and I'll assign this macro to the PyTest macro that we just created. Now when I click this button, our Python code runs, and this gets written out here. We can go and change this macro. So we might want to say, rather than uh, this column, we might want to say, uh, I don't know, just do the second column. And now I'll click this button, and it's changed. So it appears here. So this combination of having the the entire Excel object model, or the you know the API that you use from VBA available to us in Python, and the ability to expose Python functions as Excel macros or or subs, uh, really means that we can now do everything that we used to do in VBA entirely in Python. Uh, the other really useful thing to be able to do with Pixel is worksheet functions. Those work in a similar way to macros. So if I do from Pixel import, this time Excel func rather than uh, rather than Excel macro, I could write a function like, uh, let's call this one by func. Uh, and let's take, uh, let's take a list of, of words for this. And we'll just write some Python code to uh, return them joined by a space. So we can test out this function by doing pyfunc, and we use the words that we did before, just to check. Oh, <laughs> words there. There we go, we can see that I'm taking a, a list of words now and it's returning it like that. Now using the Excel func decorator, what I can do is uh, I'll also tell it what I'm gonna expect it to get. So it's gonna get an array of strings and it will return a string. These are uh, these types uh, are optional, but it just helps the pixel add-in uh, figure out how to convert the Excel arguments into the Python arguments. So when I do that, I've now got a Python function called pyfunc available to me in Excel, which I can run like this. So here's my Python function, pass it in these, and it runs the Python code and returns that string there. Now, there are many other features of Pixel uh, but I hope this gives you uh, gives you an idea of what's possible, uh, and it also shows how pretty much you know everything we can do in VBA we can we can do in Python.
there's actually a lot more we can do using Pixel than you can do in, or easily do in VBA. Like we can uh, create real-time data functions to stream live data in. We can obviously, we can access the entire Python ecosystem. So we can use things like uh, NumPy and Pandas and TensorFlow and PyTorch and all those things, which, uh, you know, means we can do a lot more, uh, more easily than we can do in VBA. Uh, we could also do things like, you know, create these custom panels, do UI stuff. Uh, we can do ribbons and, and all this kind of stuff. So we can really create a fully featured Excel add-ins, but entirely in Python without needing any VBA. So a final couple of things I wanted to point out were back on the uh, Pixel website, there's a page in the documentation here called Python as a VBA replacement. Now there are some differences between the Python language and the VBA language and syntax differences. Now this document here just goes through a few of the common ones that tend to trip people up. So uh, if you're transitioning from VBA to Python, then you know this is a, a useful page to know about. Uh, another one is if you go to uh, learn Python, so that's pixel.com slash learn dash Python, uh, and you go to that page, you'll find some resources here that'll help you uh, as you start to learn Python. Uh, in particular, this the VBA to Python cheat sheet is quite useful. It's got a few commonly used uh, Python sort of snippets, so it's a nice one to have. Uh, have handy. And then this, this ebook here is a free ebook for VBA developers who are starting to learn Python. So both of those are, are highly recommended. Uh, and then some other links here as well for some other resources. If you have uh, any questions at all about how you can use Python as a complete replacement to VBA in Excel, uh, then please uh, get in touch and let us know how we can help.